Okay, so we've um, we've got these nicely varnished now, and they look a lot better for having a coat of varnish on them, as as you can see. And we're going to install these back into the uh, cupboard. It's an absolutely horrible day out there, so it's a good use of the day to do something like this. Uh, the back cabin looks like an absolute disgrace. Though it's not a big cupboard, um, an awful lot is intended to go in there. And the place is an absolute disaster zone. So we're going to get this installed, get it all in. Um, the supports that support the shelves have been done while I was away. And they look great. So let's get it all in. Let's find a rogue screw. I don't know what it's for. It's quite a sizable one, actually. It doesn't come through here, but there's nothing above it. It's not holding anything down. Do oh. bear in mind I'm not actually what I put. I was filming you down there. Okay, just find a rogue screw. Don't know what it was. It was up into the top of that. Um, don't know what it was for. It didn't come out the top. I mean, it was up here in the blank bit, so got no idea. Anyway, when we're just putting it in, we've just noticed that really the back of this cupboard is a bit grimy. It hasn't had a good clean out in a while. So before I put the shelves in, I'm just going to give the place a quick once over because why not? We've got everything out. This is the perfect time to do it. Uh, speaking of having everything out, actually. I'm just going to see if I can remember. There we go, much better. Let's pop the door off and hand it to my gorgeous assistant. <laughs> That's what they say in all the uh, magic shows and TV shows. I present it to my gorgeous assistant. Uh, yeah. It was dirty, Bev. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the shelves in now, and I think they look great. Thank you again to our friend Trevor from Knickknack, who made the shelves and installed them. They look really, really good. Thank you, Trevor. So what we're going to do, just to stop things sliding around while we're at sea in there, I know it's got fiddles so they won't fall out, but I don't want them sliding back and forth, is we're putting some of this rubber stay put matting down. What's it called? Anti-slip mat. Um, you can get this nearly anywhere. It's nothing special about this particular one. And we're just going to put that down and things will sit on top of it. It just stops them sliding around. We use it everywhere. We've got it in all our other cupboards and things like that. And it's really, really good stuff. stuff into the cupboard it's not ideally packed we will shimmy it and shelly it around over the next few days and we'll find a better packing but for now it's in the back breath looks a lot clearer all i've got to do now is put the doors back on but as you look at this you can see that it's going to make some wonderful storage for tiles food cans laser printers it's amazing what goes in there anyway let's get the doors back on and then that job is done Yeah, I've got to fix that lock. Add that to the job list. <laughs> Another um, left of field, maybe, uh, item that you should consider uh, having on your boat is um, a padded wash bag. Now um, this one's circular and that is an important um, factor because um, I'll show you what we do with it. So it's a padded uh, wash bag. I do actually have another a little flannel as well inside. So I'm just putting the flannel at the bottom. My pasta it does very well on pasta. It's just come to the boil. So I'm just going to turn that off, put it into the bag. Let's just get it into the bag. There we go. And I'm going to close the lid. Sometimes I put another one just over the top. If I'm feeling uh, a little bit generous. There we go. Little Another flannel over the top. Put that all in. Job's on. And uh, we're coming back to our pasta in a bit. And uh, we'll see how we do.
<sighs> well, welcome back to this episode of Sailing Salty Poop. <laughs> uh, the starlings are still migrating, they're up there doing their starling things, which mostly includes pooping all over my boat. <sighs> and so cleaning the boat. And so cleaning the boat is something of a regular occurrence, just something we have to do on a rather regular basis, to be honest. Now, I am using just ordinary detergent, ordinary dish soap, ordinary good old fairy liquid. <sighs> and the reason for that is it's simple, it's cheap and it's extremely effective. It really does clean this stuff off. But I got a lot of blowback last time for using it. I was told that I was wiping out life in the marina and all sorts of things. So I've had a look and it does say it's bad for aquatic life, not marine, but aquatic. And I think there's a difference there. Apparently what it does is it breaks the surface tension of the water. And the upshot of that manoeuvre is that things like pond skaters can't skate on the pond anymore if they sink and presumably drown. I don't think there's much life like that in, in here. The water's always moving, it's always quite ripply. There doesn't seem to be a lot of things like pond skaters. And have you seen some of the stuff that comes through the marina? It's not the marina's fault. The town drains empty into the marina. And if you get bad weather, you get all sorts of stuff floating through here. But I've got to do something to clean the boat. I can't leave it covered in poop because it's unhygienic. And I don't mean that in some sort of fussy way. When I say it's unhygienic, what I mean is bird poop contains all sorts of nasties, bacteria, things like that, that if you pick them up in your feet or your hands getting on or off the boat um, and you ingest it, it'll be very bad for you. You'll come down with all sorts. And probably salmonella is probably the least of it. Um, so I do have to clean the boat. Hygiene matters it really does and as far as i can see apart from breaking surface tension on the water this stuff doesn't do anything else it's not like it poisons them directly or anything like that it it's a surface tension break it's a surfactant if you know different tell me but that was that but it also gets the question of um what to wear on my feet while i'm doing this <laughs> downsides of using this stuff, apart from wiping out the world's marine populations, is that um, it makes the decks very, very slippery. So what do you wear in your feet? And it's a question that we asked our users on our Discord server, you know, what sort of things do you wear? I mean, all sorts of answers, some of them are tad worrying. Um, I think my most worrying answer, because I didn't quite understand it, was we wear thongs when we're aboard. And I thought to myself, yeah, I was asking about feet and shoes, not underwear. But it turns out that thongs are probably what we would call lace-up sandals in the UK, or possibly Jesus sandals, I'm not too sure. Um, but it's the ones that lace up your legs and things. But flip-flops, fancy flip-flops is apparently what a thong is. <laughs> it comes as news to me. Um, we had all sorts of things. People wear Dubarry 200 pound deck shoes. Lovely if you can get it. I don't know if I'd wear expensive shoes to clean up bird poop. Um, now it turns out that I am actually wearing deck shoes. And I got them from Decathlon, they were about 40 pounds. And I didn't go hunting for deck shoes in particular. What I went hunting for was trainers. Because I usually wear trainers. And I don't usually have a problem getting them. but. Trainers are a fashion item and they come and go and the current fashion seems to be that the soles of your trainers are black. You know, the sort of thing that leaves big lines up and down your deck. And we decided that, or I decided, that black is not really a good colour to have. Normally I'd wear squash shoes which have like a tan coloured thing on the bottom, they don't leave trails. But I can't get the squash shoes, I don't know why. Don't play squash. Um, but I couldn't get any trainers that weren't black soled. And the price of them was outrageous. I mean, like they were looking like 90, 100 pound for a pair of trainers. So these were 40 pound from Decathlon and they turn out to be deck shoes. So they have a light colored bottom. 
I don't know if the grip's particularly good. It doesn't seem bad, but the Bavaria deck is quite good, so that's the thing. But um, the other thing that this, these wouldn't be any good to me at sea on a stormy day, but we have boots for that. The problem with the boots is getting a pair that lasts. And originally we had gill sealing boots and they lasted quite well. But <laughs> quite well isn't forever, nothing lasts forever. My current gill boots, which I got a couple of years ago, have literally fallen apart. I might buy another pair, but I'm not buying them until the day an hour were going off. I want the maximum use out of them, but they fell apart in no time. It was terrible stuff. So I guess we're still on trainers for deck shoes and that'll be that. I don't have anything expensive like Dubarry's. I'm terrified of losing the damn things, to be honest. That's the sort of price they cost. Ah <laughs> oh dear. In a sense, we're cheap skates. We like stuff at a reasonable price that works well. And at the minute, these seem to be it. Um, I've no idea how long these are going to last, but we'll just have to wait and see. Using the little, um, I call it a cosy, um, you know, because it is just basically a little cosy method. Um, does work um, to some extent with rice um, and potatoes. I have used it for both, mainly because uh, sometimes uh, our Mr. D is a little bit um, full, but um, it's not quite as good on the potatoes you might have to reheat them um another time just during the time that you're putting them on um but it does a great job at but for, for pasta it's an absolute great standby and it just means that you're not having to get all sorts of stuff and you're not using your gas which uh, is a very very important thing I'm back in the galley um, because Beverly has uh, left me alone again, but there you go. Um, and um, I am using um, the wash bag, but this time I'm using the wash bag to cook some uh, noodles. So that's what I've got in the new in the wash bag today. Um, but I thought I'd take you. But I thought I'd give you. A... But I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, talk about something else which is uh, quite useful to have on a boat and uh, it's a water bottle. Now as you can see rather than water in here we've actually got oil and the reason that we like to um, put our oil bottles into our water bottle is it's got a nice firm bottom base, it's really rigid um, and then you can just uh, lift the lid, uh, pour in the oil, giving it a little bit of a squeeze, I admit that, put that down and, um, you know, oops, little food bath, plenty of those. Um, but yeah, and then you can just um, put the oil in with the, um, uh, in my case, onions and mushrooms. Mm -mm -mm. Gonna add some chicken to that and uh, hopefully that'll be my tea.